Pipe Network presents. Oh, and just a heads up, we may talk about things that are potentially triggering for you. So, listener discretion is advised. Hello, everybody. Oh, my God. Hi. We have not recorded an episode in a long, long time. And it's raining right now. So, this is going to be one heck of a show. <laughs> It's mood, loves It's mood. It's yeah. It's in the Rain scary is so mood. nice though. Here is so cold actually. I don't know. Can, can you guys? Can, can you like, hear the rain? Hmm? Like, uh, uh, let's shut up for a second. Can you guys hear the rain? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> that that is the sound of a thunderstorm rolling in here in Davao because apparently it's summer and there's a lot of. Things and all that that we have to, you know, weather stuff. It's annoying, and uh, we need to record today, so we can't hold this off for another day. We need to record today. Okay, we've been holding it off for like weeks. Yeah, we've been holding <laughs> it off for weeks. Okay, um, today it's just us. It's just me and Inya. It's just like old times, you know. I'll just you know bring it back to yes. season one. Uh, but we're gonna have some season two stuff like fright flick. Of course, we have some life yes. updates. And today's episode, it's all about sounds. Ooh. Why do you seem so scared? Hi, I'm Ninya. And my name is Andrew. Welcome to the Frightening Alarming Real Life Tales Show. A podcast where we talk about scary stories that happened in real life. If you were a part of this terrorist group, you would be targeted and killed by the Aswa. These three girls, their friends, two of them decided to stab their other friend just to please Slenderman. Bigfoot is the internet influencer of the monster world. It killed 19 American servicemen that day. So sit back, relax, and try not to go crazy with fright. Aren't we all crazy? I want this show to be family friendly. Family friendly, we talk about murder and horror and all that crap. And welcome to the Frightening Alarming Real Life Tale Show. Hello, of hello. Of course, my name is Andrew and I am your host for today. I am joined by my co-host, Ninya. Woo! Hi. What, what? Woo! Party, party! Yeah! Woo. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's okay. That's enough. <laughs> so yeah, well, what's been that going on lately? Um, we haven't recorded in like weeks, so two weeks ish. Yeah. Two to three. So I actually had time to listen into the old episodes that we, the previous episodes, the last week's mm-hmm. episodes, and I kind of noticed something, Nins. Mm, that's how. Um. I feel like we've been waking up and choosing violence a lot lately. Oh, you just realized. Yes. Um, okay, so... Congrats. For uh, I, I just wanted to say that uh, on the show, we sound a little bit aggressive. But uh, uh, just to clear things out so that no one else will feel like, oh, uh, uh, you guys are, you know... Uh, violent, we're aggressive now. Yeah, are aggressive to each other. No, we don't mean any harm in this podcast. We literally forget everything that happens after the recording. Yeah, like, and, like we have to listen to the to the the, um, to the episode. When, for me, for me, because like you listen to the episode when you're editing. For me, I had to listen to it when it comes out. So I'm like, oh yeah, I remember we talked about this, and then like a few seconds later, I forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just just know that whatever you hear on the podcast, it's us, but it's heightened. You know, you know, we're we're trying to play into a bit of the show, and uh, just want to say that uh, that we, me and Ninya, are not fighting. We're not falling out. And to whoever messaged us about that, uh, we are not fighting. Okay, just saying. No. Oh wait, someone did. Yeah, someone like, did. Guys, okay. No, it, this is just us being stupid with each yeah, other. Yeah, this is just That's us being did. stupid. We're just playing around. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Okay, Nins, how are you? I'm okay. I'm good. I've been doing random stuff and trying to be productive at the same time. Do nothing. 
Wait, uh, aren't you planning <laughs> to do you? a, a you new vlogging series that you that you um are what? Aren't what? you preparing for that? Or, or is it's this a not secret? A vlogging series. It's I. It's not really a secret. I tell friends about it, but I don't really post it publicly yet or whatever. But um, to to give people like an idea, I plan to make some sort of it's not really a review kind of thing it's like more of a visual info whatever um wherein i do a fan art of something and mm-hmm. then um talk about like what that thing is so i think i asked um friends for names and like i have to like dig that up for conversations oh oh oh, oh. What, <laughs> I, like, what what names totally have you write it down. what names have you thought of um for some reason, my I remember because I don't remember it right now. I like totally forgot about it, but um, I remember like thinking something the line the that goes on the line like, um, and this is or uh, something like that, like something like that. <laughs> uh, so and this is the title is and this is that, that's uh, so, what you're remembering right now. Yeah, that, that's that's a yeah that's a that's a thing that I'm remembering. But um, I mean, I'm trying to scroll up to like conversations of people. Uh, Did you see. ask me about that? I forgot what I told you. Yeah, you, yeah, you asked me about that. I think I like what he told me. Let me try to find it though. This is gonna take a while. That's the thing. I'm like, yeah, we, we talk a lot <laughs> like, off scrolling up. Uh, uh, off the podcast. No, because like so... I think we talked. We talked about this in group chats, so that's a thing. Oh no! It's like not just our conversation. <laughs> well, like anyway, conversation uh, that, that's gonna be your homework for next oh, yeah, week. That, I wanna, thing. I wanna have the list of names, you know, because, you know, maybe the the people listening could help, you know, figure out a name for your show. Oh God, I'm like horrible with names. Please, like, if if I. F- figure or like find the names do send me like what what do you think uh, should i name this thing that i'm gonna make in youtube so because it's just it's just basically visuals and then like um info information stuff on it like this show was um back in this year and then it started as like a comic or a book or like um, it started as a series then becomes a book or some s- stuff like that and then like small takes for me that oh i'm excited for this thing that's gonna come up soon about this this fan art that i'm doing i guess um, i guess yeah, you could it's like, say it's, it's like a it's like a little podcast with a with another visual thing so it, it's kind of like a mix of that so you know I, i'm excited for that as well and that's why we're talking about it now yeah so thanks nins Thanks. Did you ask how I am? Yeah, I did. And then, like, you brushed it off. But okay. <laughs> Can you ask it again? Yeah. So, how are you, A? What are you up to? <laughs> um, okay. So, <laughs> um, I have been... Okay. So, last week, one of the reasons why we couldn't um, record last week, it was because my grandma, my mom, and my little sister had their birthday week. Birthday. Yeah, people don't know, but... Uh, my my grandma's, my mom's, and my little sister's birthday are two days apart from each other. Oh, okay. Because so, I thought, like, um, I know, like, your mom and your sister's, like, two days apart. I thought your grandma was, like, a week apart. But okay. I did yeah, not know that. Yeah. So, first it was my grandma. Then two days later, it was my mom. And then two days later, it was Bella. What we did was we just compressed everything into one celebration. Like, one big celebration. Of course, we had, like... We had, like, family dinners because, you know, we can't have full-blown parties. Not that we would have full-blown parties, you know, like, uh, even if Mm -mm. it wasn't in the pandemic. Yeah, that's, not allowed. (laughs) No, I mean, like, even if it wasn't the pandemic, we still wouldn't have, like, full-blown parties. Like, who would we invite? You know, it's still going to be the same people. On my mom's birthday, we went up to the mountains. Uh, We went to Buddha. Mm -hmm. Um, Is Buddha considered the mountains? It's, like, super cold. Technically, I guess so. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I guess so. Yeah, I, I, I would say yeah. Yeah, I would say yeah. So anyway, we went up to the mountains and then it was so cold. I loved it so much uh, because right now it is summer in the Philippines and it is so hot. Like during the day, it's like I can't like fucking just melt me like wax and, you know, like <laughs> like douse me in water like every 30 minutes. 
because if you don't mm-hmm. do that, I might burn. Um, uh, yeah, this is why so we don't leave the house. When we, we went don't leave to the, the fan, we went to the mountains. We went to Buddha, and it was so cold. Um, I actually knitted a scarf. I didn't know. Oh I yeah, don't I know saw that you, one. Yeah, it's like really cute. Yeah, I loved it cutie. so much, and I am now. Like I was gonna ask, like, what did you use for it? Because like, um, where did you get the yarn and stuff? Because like usually stuff like that for me, I find it hard to like find or get. Yeah, it's so hard to find yarns. Like, can you get um, it in Shopee or uh, Lazada? I have friends who told me to get it from you know, like Lazada or Shopee, by the way, use the mm-hmm. affiliate links. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but I got these yarns from Daiso. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, and then, uh, they, they, had, have... they had like Japanese yarns and I was like, ooh, the color's so cute. So I bought it and yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so we, we went up to the mountains. I was so excited because I love camping. I love camping so much. So I brought my tent. I bought a sleeping bag. I brought everything. I was like, fully I'm like prepared to go camping and then I forgot my foam or my mattress so I had to sleep in the hard cement and I was like okay uh, note to self buy an air mattress with a pump so if you guys are planning to go on a camping trip always remember to bring your inflatable mattress or if you're planning to do a legit camp like find a soft ground and then sleep there because I honestly thought that you're gonna like you were staying at um, Tirsos Resort. For some reason, my brain went to Has- Ashenda, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. resort. <laughs> um, brain. Actually, yeah, Tirso has offered for us to stay there, but uh, uh, for this one, we went a little bit further than Tirso's Resort. So, so it's actually the same road. It's just way, way, way further where there's no reception. In Tirso's place, you can oh, still okay. get reception, but like in, in over there, further ahead, the, the signal doesn't reach. No. So we were basically like on a retreat. I had to go off on all the things that I downloaded on my phone, movies, podcasts. <laughs> that, those were the only things keeping, uh-huh. me, keeping me, you know, sane. I didn't, I didn't have any Same. books. <laughs> um, so yeah, th- that was that. So yeah, yeah, I slept on the ground. My back hurts, but I loved every single minute of it. If I could go back, I would go back so hard. Um, but of course, uh, I want to go to, you know, maybe for my birthday, I'll go there again. Because, you know, it's safe. All you have to do is bring your own car. Oh, okay. In Terso's place. I want, uh, for my birthday, I want to go there. So okay. uh, it, it's safe, yeah. you know. Because it was good there. You're you're like isolated from people, mm-hmm. open air. I'm like, sorry, my brain went to like when we went there. Like we were expecting like we don't know anyone. It's just me, you, Tirso, and then like um, Tirso's mom's family or something. And then like when we got there, we we oh, saw like um, schoolmates from like way back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that so, was hilarious. Um, during and like the, I only know the one person, so hello. <laughs> during that time, we went to me, Ninya, and Tirso went to Tirso's resort. Apparently, people from my school and were also in that same resort because apparently they booked the the same night. And also, I'm pretty sure he doesn't <laughs> listen to the show. But uh, I had like no. a, a little fling with someone from way way back, and um, he was he was there. <laughs> I, it was me. Tirso and Ninya, we were all in this gazebo and then all of a sudden he shows up like trying to get away from all the drinking like because you know he doesn't want to get drunk and then he Uh starts talking about his failing love life and how no one likes him no one Uh wants to be with him Uh like that like that and I was like girl if you all that stuff you know like I offered you know you didn't take it I'm pretty sure I, I'm like that was like years ago before yeah, you and Tirso I mean, were like, yeah, I, yeah and it was so awkward because he was talking about his love life and me and Tirso were uh-huh. there uh, you know we were together our relationship was going strong mm-hmm. and you know and you know he was trying to bring oh, the atmosphere down and was I was just great. like girl yeah, I'm not having like, it how do I how do we leave this conversation <laughs> and like trying to be like uh huh uh-huh. like uh-huh. the entire time I remember and it was mm-hmm. like Oh, I'm tired. Like, try to be nice and like, oh, I'm tired now. Let's go to bed. <laughs> and then I'm like, we're not going to bed. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that happened. But anyway, one of my pandemic hobbies is knitting. 
So I, you know, this is recent, and I believe Ninya, you do crocheting, right? Kind of still do, but like it's more like did. Uh-huh. Right now, I'm trying on a new pattern for uh, knitting, and it's so hard. I, I got into knitting, and also <laughs> I. I started listening to a lot of old time radio programs, you know, like from the 1930s to the 1950s. Oh yeah, you were. I I just love the accent. Uh, uh, we've been, I've been doing it on the D and D. I've been How doing that sounds. same accent uh, in the D and D game game through. Uh, what do you call it? The D and D gameplay mm-hmm. that we do every Tuesday. I I just I just live for it, you know. Mm-hmm. And of course. Radio drama, who doesn't love a good radio drama? And apparently, I found out that a lot of old-time radio <laughs> programs, like, like the programming back then, they loved horror and mystery and all that crap. The, the crap that we Mm-mm. talk about. That's yeah, like so, a whole thing. You know, it, I, I feel like if Farts wasn't what it is, then it would be a show, you know, if it wasn't a podcast like now. Uh, and I feel like it would have been a show in the 1940s under a different name. Just me? I just, I just feel like, I just feel like that. Probably. Oh my <laughs> God! Do you know what I just noticed? What's up? I am an old man. I'm into knitting. My back hurts, and I love listening to old time radio. I'm an old man. Yes, you are an old man. <laughs> there you have it. Let's get into the fright flick. Of course, I said we were gonna do a fright flick. Here we go. We d- what? What was? <laughs> oh, don't tell me you didn't finish watching the perfection. I watched it. I finished. Okay, here I'm we go. Kidding. <laughs> Or, you know, today, depending on when you're watching it or listening to the show. But, but anyway. <laughs> and welcome to The Fright Flick, the part of the show where we talk about a horror movie that we all watched. And we judge the characters in the movie. So, uh, Nins, what movie did we watch? Um, the Perfection. That took me a second there. <laughs> yeah, I was oh, like, like uh, what, what's the did title? You, did, she, did she forget? I watched what? it. What? I watched it. It's just like, I don't remember the name. It's like names. Like, I don't remember the names of the characters, but I know like this girl and that guy and the other girl. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> and then the we... child. Okay. So first, before we talk about the movie, um, I, I was like, how do I put this into a non-spoiler synopsis? But mm-hmm. uh, you know, like before we get in, no way. before we get into spoiling everything, how do I put it into a non-spoiler uh-huh. synopsis? So I kind of just searched in Google, and um, apparently, mm-hmm. uh, it it tells me the perfection is about a troubled musical prodigy and a new star pupil embark down a sinister path. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. But I will say that I like I did not l- read the synopsis. I came in on like watching the show with like no clue and I th- I thought like it's some um some person who has this like um concept of like you have to be perfect and then like I have to be perfect and I'm like obsessed with like th- that's why the title is perfection. That's how I like I thought it would go down. Well like Kinda, but no, not really. Okay, so I remember when you first you kind of watched it a week earlier than me. So, um, mm-hmm. you were. Oh kind yeah, of I, like, I told you that. Like, yeah, I, you're like, I can't, I can't, I, I can't watch this, Andrew. This is so yeah, disgusting. Because like for me, and then like you, you were talking about, like, it's fine. Because like I've watched um what what movie was it um Chainsaw Massacre or something while eating. That's what you said, Saw, and then like yeah, I was like yeah I yeah yeah I, 
I, I I watch like stuff like that too while eating. Like that's not a problem. The problem was like, um, I don't know if this is spoiler territory. No, just spoil but, it. Um, just spoil it. We, we gave them like two weeks okay. of warning. <laughs> it was the vomiting that got me. It was like, ew. I like I don't want to watch this anymore. It's like the vomiting and then the 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 insects that's crawling under her skin. And that those two are like, ew, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> the, those are the two that got me. But like the rest was like, oh, okay, this is pretty okay. So <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> you told me that uh, this was. Uh, you're like, oh, Andrew, I can't watch this. Is this is so disgusting? And I'm like, oh, okay. don't it, don't it, don't watch it while you're eating. It'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine. I'm like so used to gross <laughs> stuff. You know, I I know all about the gross stuff. <laughs> and then I watched it, and I was <laughs> like, oh my god, this is disgusting. <laughs> I love it. I know. I love this movie so, so much. Because it's really good. It's like a good movie. But like, it's, it's so stuff. good. <laughs> like, it, okay. that few moments. Of the, the thing that I noticed about the movie is that it, it is set like a, you know, like a uh, a, a classical piece. Did you mm-hmm. notice that? Uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm not really, mm-hmm. you know, into like, like the classical music and all that. But uh, I do believe that classical music it is it, it's set in in parts, right? In in mm-hmm. in in numbers and all that. I don't know how to explain it. Basta, there's like number one, two, three, four. It's set in four parts, right? The movie. It's set in four mm-hmm. parts, and then there's like. It's like the same thing for classical music. You have like the 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 number one, the number two, the number three, and the number four. So it's uh, kind of like that. I really thought at the start of the movie because it opens up with like um her like with her mom that's like that that died. I really thought that it's like okay, so her mom comes back to haunt her like like as a ghost or like it's like a psychological thing that she's like. She's like, her mom was super obsessed with her. She's supposed to be like, you're supposed to be perfect. Everything you're doing is wrong. Like, this is how you're supposed to do it. And then she becomes obsessed with like trying to perfect herself in the vision of like how her mom wanted her to be, even though her mom's dead. That's how I thought the story is going to go. But like, nope. Okay, so basically <laughs> what happens is um, this girl, uh, her name is Charlotte. And she, she goes, she leaves like the school uh, for musicians and she uh-huh. to take care of her dying mother, and then her mother dies, and then f- years later, um, she she gets invited back into the musical world, into the school, and then there she meets the girl Elizabeth, who is kind of like the new Charlotte, because back then Charlotte uh-huh. was the prodigy of uh, the school. What's his name? Um, Anton. But anyway, yeah, Anton. Um, he was kind of like the prodigy for the school. Uh, Charlotte and it, she was replaced by Elizabeth. So now it's Elizabeth mm-hmm. who's who's living the life that Charlotte would have had if her mother didn't get she sick. She didn't leave. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah, or that. And at first I kind of thought it was going to be like, oh, Charlotte is definitely jealous of Elizabeth. Like jealous, and all that. yeah. It's and I thought it was uh-huh. like that. But then okay. But then the the, the but then they have sex, and I was like, "Oh my god, there is yeah, oh my they, god. They, I yeah, love, it's like steamy and shit." I love this movie so much. Um, okay, and then <laughs> and then the next morning they have like a hangover, and then um, mm-hmm. she's kind of like, "Oh, um, uh, here, uh, take I, this, I thought, um, drink this." And yeah, because like um, there is this bit where like um before. Before they had sex there's this bit that um there's this like guy that vomited and then like they're like talking about this virus that's going on or some shit like that like there's a disease or something and then there's like a scene where the camera focuses on like a fly or a mosquito that's on her back i thought like oh okay this is basically setting up that this is how the the thing gets like transmuted and then, like, yeah, when they I had thought the it, hangover. Th- that was, like, that was yeah, a red herring. That yeah. was a red herring. But anyway, yeah. yeah. So, so oh, like, she has, a, like, like this hangover and all that. And then she goes to... Uh, they, they, they go out in the mountains, kind of like me, mm-hmm. uh, just a few days ago. Because um, um, they were supposed to, like, play in some, like, like 
uh, like far away place. They were supposed to play shallow or something. Like their music, some are far away. That's like no one really knows them, and then they just want to play because they they love music. And then um, go on. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So what happened was um, uh, apparently Charlotte was trying to protect Elizabeth, and she kind of did mm-hmm. that by by cutting her arm off and uh, giving her a drug overdose and all that. I'm like, oh my god, this bitch is crazy. The twist. Uh-huh. I love like, Charlotte so she's... much. So I have here on my notes. Yeah. I was like, okay, definitely not normal. Something is wrong. Crazy. And then the next line is, I love mm-hmm. her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's... Yep. That's that, 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 right. that, that Charlotte. Okay. I want to talk about three characters here. I have Charlotte, Elizabeth, and Anton. So it's in four sets, right? Every set has a different antagonist Mm-mm. in number one it was um the virus thingy the red herring and then yeah, in number the virus. Three, it, was, uh-huh. it was charlotte, charlotte. And then number three it was elizabeth and then in number four it was elizabeth. Anton. so it, it's kind Anton. of like oh my god mm-hmm. it, the the twists and turns mm-hmm. i love it so much the build up yeah uh-huh. the build up the climax okay oh, so ayon uh let's talk about charlotte first i loved everything that she did in the movie mm-hmm because like if if you like look at her look at like all the things that she did in her perspective like yes she would have made she the, the decisions she did made sense like perfect sense cuz like 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 as you as you mentioned earlier she she did something like like this grand thing to protect elizabeth from you know uh, whatever it was Cause again like less trying to lessen the spoilers um and then, like that drastic measure, basically in in Elizabeth's perspective, it basically ruined her, like forever. Yeah. But like, uh, in so Charlotte's cool. perspective, she was like, "Okay, uh, I need this... I need to save you. This is yeah. how I save you." Yeah, this is how I save you. And then, like in Elizabeth, yeah, this is like, no, this is this is killing me. This is how I die. You you killed me in 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 the the sense of. What you did is so good, though. I love her acting. Uh, definitely, she had mm-hmm. she had me thinking there's something wrong about her. And then my favorite, you know, my Mm-mm. favorite part about Charlotte, uh, or my favorite scene with Charlotte, um, it was when she they were in the mountains, you know, like somewhere in the middle of China. Oh, oh, when she when she pulled out the when she um, pulled the knife. out the knife all yeah. of a sudden, oh, and I was God. like, this I'm is like, she was what? like. <laughs> this is so random. She just pulls out a knife. And, and, like you don't oh, even see yeah, her take I'm, it. It was brain, like, like in her hand already. Yeah. And then she kind of just like Yeah. Like she she you puts her hands it. up and then oh, she's like, oh. Here, take it. And then, You know what to do. Yeah, you know what to do. And I'm like, uh, I love her so I'm much. Like, Holy shit. Oh my god. Okay. So there. Uh Charlotte, I love her. She definitely had crazy vibes in her. Um she mm-hmm. uh, she might be crazy. I don't know what to say. Uh, let's talk about the second person that I love in the movie, and that is mm-hmm. Elizabeth. I she is <laughs> okay. Um, uh, it's no secret I love men, but when I saw her, I was like, mm-hmm. I'm dropping everything. Marry me. She is so beautiful. <laughs> she is so. She is. She's really pretty. She's, she's so really really pretty. perfect. Her eyes. <laughs> the way they sparkle in the light, oh my god! I think I like how they captured it though, like like um the directing of like her face and like what she does yeah, and her like angles. stuff is like really good. The she, way she flirted they, with Charlotte they, for yeah, I think like they put it in like in a perspective that like she really stands out. That's how I think like they did it in the in the movie, like she really really stands out. In like the best of ways, and then in set I think four, that's how it was. in set four when she had the suit on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. when she had that suit oh, on. Oh, I love how she's I like wearing the it. suit. <laughs> it's like yes, <laughs> like the suit is looks so good it's on you, so dang good. girl. Oh my god, go. uh, it's so uh, good. I loved her in her dress. <laughs> I loved her in her suit. Everything just just yeah. step on me. Uh, bully me, kill me, <laughs> do it, do it. I don't care. As long as you do it, I'm fine. Her acting is so good as well because she had me believe Mm-mm. that she was like somewhere along the way. Like, she kind of uh, turns bad. And I think it was on mid set three, um, starting on set four. 
that's when it like oh okay she has this thing going on and yeah. then, like there's a tempo change it's like, and a I'm like oh my god the twists uh-huh. and turns and what the fuck uh, uh, I don't like she, how the music plays through in uh, it. That, that's about Elizabeth and finally Anton next um, would be Anton uh-huh. so Anton is like Anton is I thought he was the most normal person at the yeah start. and then like I think uh, for me, like how I perceived him is like he's like the guy that you he's basically Gandalf that you have to like you have to pass through to like get like you know do your thing like like he he's basically gatekeeping the music thing like especially the classical music thing he basically gatekeep the entire thing which like like I kind of don't like you but like you're not crazy like this girl. <laughs> And then like Charlotte. it turns out he was the crazy person all along. Yeah, he was the most crazy I, person in the entire movie. I like, hate Hulk. this man so much. I hate it's this like, man like, so much. When when set four, or like, yep, yep, I like, like the acting was so good. Like it's like it brings you back to like um, what's her face? Uh, the the girl from Harry Potter. That everyone Hermione. hates because oh, like no. No, uh, no, no, the the teacher, uh, the the. Uh, I like I, I love Harry Potter, but for no, Snape. no, I'm, everyone loves her. No, the person that every, the, the, the one that like everyone pink. hates. Ah, yeah. Dolores Umbridge. The, the one that wears pink. Yeah, Umbridge. Like my brain's. Like, what's her name? <laughs> like I don't like you. Delete. <laughs> it's like that like level. Like I don't like this person. Like delete. No, like, uh, but, but, but like, okay. That's what the, I feel about thing, him. The thing about it is, I liked him at the start, and then they pulled the curveball. At the start, it was pretty okay. And like, then they pulled the curveball, and then I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my god, this man is literally the Delete. worst. If 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 uh-huh. he was, dare I say it, he's worse than Umbridge. Okay, um, <laughs> if from the start he was bad to the bone, and it was like. Yeah, you're bad. Yeah, I would have been like, you, fine. You, you, I don't like you. But like, no. At the start, he was like normal. He, he was, was like, like normal. he was like trying to help, and then like he was like, oh, okay, like um, this thing happened to you. Here's what we can do for you to help. Like he he kind of was trying to help on like set three at the beginning of set three, right? Yeah. Like when when like the whole thing happened, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is like. Like, okay, we're gonna put you in the house and I'll try to help you for like a little bit. I, I think and you then, mean like, set two. No. Set two. Uh set three oh, is, is it um th- set oh, yeah, three yeah, yeah. is sorry, uh, sorry. yeah. But anyway, um there. Mm-hmm. Uh he's the craziest out of all three characters. <sighs> By the way, I if, like, you, I really hate him. if you didn't know already, there are no deaths in this movie, at least the main characters. No. Um Yeah. I think we can say that, right? I mean, we did we yeah. did give them warnings. Uh, there are no deaths in this mm-hmm. movie from the main characters. Uh, mm-hmm. But please be prepared for some gory stuff. Like, like out of everything in the movie, I only have the one question, though. Like, like the one question. Well, what is what happened to the... What happened to the, the the next protagonist after Elizabeth, though? Like, was, like in the entire time, was she just upstairs? <laughs> And oh like, had no, no clue um, everything. Uh, I don't, b- I because don't... a lot a lot of a lot of the rooms are soundproof. Soundproof. Yeah, yeah. So she literally couldn't so, like, hear anything. She was like asleep or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because like I'm like thinking like okay, so everything happened. Like there's like a lot of shit going on, and then like there's this little girl just sleeping in her room, and then like like the hours. Of like the entire thing happening plus the entire the time that like they got to bandage and clean their shit and then like change clothes probably bathe and like like how many hours did that take was like the entire time like this morning come and then the child still is asleep we're like how's that going <laughs> I don't know it's like the things like question in my mind okay <laughs> like so the most non important thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. I know. I said that uh, *Fright Flick* is the the part of the show where we review horror movie characters and we talk about their actions in the film. But literally, uh, if they did anything else, this movie would have wouldn't have been as perfect as as it was. You know, if no, they did something no. else, everything yeah. that they did in this movie is so a good. plus. I yes. loved it. 
I loved it. Um, it's so good. Uh, hold on, hold on. I uh, last thing though, I definitely feel that this okay. is like a cult. This is like a cult. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. like straight up cult. Yeah, like, they're like no talking questions about, asked. Like they're that, like this talking about classical cult. music and being closer to God, and you know, like uh, yeah, yeah. And then like, like if you make like one note of mistake, you're gonna have to do this, and then yeah. like you have to like be branded. Yeah, you, you have to achieve the, per- the, the, the perfection that's... and all yeah. that. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is that's definitely... that's straight up cult. Yeah, this that's is cult. just like this brainwashing and stuff. Yeah, will we survive in this? Uh, if we were in this situation. If we were in this situation, I definitely feel like we would survive. And you know why? Why? We are not musical prodigies. <laughs> no. Because like what I was going to say is like, we are never going to be in this situation in the first place. Cause, like, we are never going to be like, selected I... <laughs> for the perfection. We are... Uh, like ever. We, we, we won't like, even... even... like as like underlings, no... We won't be in the get school, into the school. No, they kicked us out. <laughs> yeah, they, the, they, the moment up, we like, enter the like, school, they'd be like, can you play? I'm like, nope. no. And then they're like, get out. Uh, I'd be like, okay, we survived the film. So, Andrew um, <laughs> Andrew can play um, ukulele, guitar. Um, what else can you play? Yeah? I don't remember. I can't play the guitar. I can play <laughs> the keyboard. Um, oh, you, a keyboard. You, um, what else? This is... Like uh, I know there's, there's a one string instrument. That's the only. Uh huh. What else? I think there's th- three or that's that's three. I think there's one more. I want to learn remember. the kalimba. Um, I think that's yeah, it really. The, those I are the instruments that the I know how to, how to play. And then um, for me, she can't play anything. I can play. Nina has no sense horribly. of rhythm. <laughs> That's true, but I still, that doesn't mean I can't play. Back then, I did um, piano lessons. If, if we were in the movie, we would be the unperfection. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yes. That, that's our movie title right there. That, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> Fright Flick. Uh, this is probably my favorite Fright Flick out of all the Fright Flicks that we've done. Um, I so just far, love this so movie. Far. I just love this movie so much. Uh, today's episode is all about sounds, right? So mm-hmm. uh, I, I was kind of inspired to do this episode when we, when I listened to that Lavender Town music. and I, I Oh, the one that I sent? Or is it the one like before? Because I sent you like in Lavender Town. No, 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 the, no, the, the bit like that, that we did. The bit that we did in, uh, you know, like last season, you know? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so inspired. To do, I was so I was inspired to put that on the show. Uh, I'm pretty sure there are other things that that relate to sounds, music, and all that jazz, and um, make it scary. And the thing is, we found we found some, and it is uh, there is a lot. There are some frequencies of sound that can actually alter your brain and your perception of things and you always feel uneasy uh, i remember there was this scientist who tried to investigate like a haunted lab and it turns out it was because something was making this certain type of frequency that all the other people were having hallucinations they were feeling like they were being haunted by ghosts and all that definitely sounds can affect you and your brain and Things can get scary. Mm-mm. Yeah. So we are going to be taking a break. And when we come back, Nins, what is your story all about? I do have a story. It's about, um, I got it from NASA. So I believe we can play it on the show. But I'm not entirely sure. And then um, I do have like a side story that's that related to like water. Because um, the NASA story is called The Bloop. It's like sounds so cute. Shush, 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 shush. Uh, I only said like okay. what what it's what, what it's about. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it yet. I'm gonna be taking it's a like, break. It's like the sound underwater. Okay, we'll be right back. Go on on water. What's up? It's me, Andrew. You may know me as the co-host of the frightening, alarming, real-life tale show. But did you know that I also make video blogs? Yeah, they're all on Facebook. 
So come and join me in all the crazy adventures that I get up to at www.facebook.com forward slash The Andrew Tops. That's T-H-E-A-N-D-R-E-W-T-O-P-S. See ya! Welcome back since it's Hello. just us for today. Andrew, number one or number two? Oh, no. oh my ninja, there she goes again. My, my, she's got something for ya. Oh, you listener, brace yourself and then try not to get paranoia. Okay, Nins, so what is your fart all about? Um, my part. Part. <laughs> yeah, yes, your part. Your part. Yeah, my part. My part of this segment are, uh, is called The Bloop. We're in. Um, back in 1997, there's these few scientists, NASA scientists, who were basically like um, checking for underwater volcanoes uh, in the Pacific, just like trying to sense them. And then they have this device that can like listen, like audible sounds for um, like animals and like volcanic activities and stuff like that. So, so that was a thing. And then. Um, Back in 1997, they actually captured something that's strange, to say the least. Um, I sent you the link. Can you open that one up? Yes. I this, the it. link that I sent you is um, is a loop of the bloop. bloop. Uh, can you play it? Bloop. It sounds so cute, but like, uh, can you play it? Is this Have scary? you listened to it? Is this scary or is this cute? No, it's like... Just play it. It's it's gonna be fine. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm reading the comments, and then someone said it was it, it was SpongeBob and Patrick blowing bubbles again. <laughs> uh, that's like that's that's part of the conspiracy theory. <laughs> and then and then somebody said well, like, I can speak Megalodon, and this translates to Shark Pog. <laughs> Stop reading that comment. There, there's another one that says, play at 2.0 speed. It sounds like my dad's fart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, somebody said, somebody said, Cthulhu be like, hmm, why not send them something scary? Bloop. <laughs> I'll play it now. Okay, playing it. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So yeah, that, 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 that that's it? the bloop right there. Yeah, that, that right there. So, that was it? Um, yeah, that, 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 that's it. That's like bloop. Like, it sounds... Okay, that's give it? pause, pause it. Cause, cause it <laughs> that, this, is, this is your scary... This is your scary fart? Listen, listen. That's a low... Ultra, ultra low frequency sound that's like underwater for over 5,000 like kilometers apart like that's like really really underwater and then like like no whale or group of whales like um made like sounds like that yeah but or, it's like or is loud like, enough that, that, to make that I, I was, sound you know was what I was expecting I was expecting <laughs> like like glug, 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 glug. you know I was expecting something like that but it was it was just all all we heard was all we heard was that <laughs> this is it yeah but like yeah that's it but like people back then like for people like granted people back then like it sounds scary because it's like like really really underwater though like where is that sound coming from? And it's not man-made. It's not animals. Like no shit made that sound. 
like or can make that sound like because that's really <laughs> really loud so the theory about like the bloop uh, is um as you read the comment section it's like it's a cthulhu it's a warning from cthulhu being aw- awoken and stuff like that that's that's like like it's rampage and so on that's that that's one of the theories um the other was again whales but like again as i mentioned earlier there's no whale or a group of whales can make a sound that loud because that's like extremely loud the the third theory was it's like an underwater earthquake that like made that sound but like i don't think that that's how earthquakes should sound i don't know i don't know the sound of earthquakes but like personally i don't think that's how it's supposed to sound but um it wasn't until um, about 10 years after like the bloop was you know picked <laughs> up when they actually Actually, it's so I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> this is the frightening, alarming real life tale show, and you're here talking about the blue. Because <laughs> it's it's like it's like really really freaky back then. Because like this was like like yeah. years ago. Yeah, scary. So um, ten years after Definitely the blue, scary. like they finally. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm shaking. I'm they so finally figured right out what caused like this the the sound. Uh, like, uh, God dang it! <laughs> so um, basically, the loops are consistent signals that are essentially identical to ice quakes underwater. So it's basically like ice that um it did its thing underwater that's just it it's not like oh bit 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 you're cutting out okay how's this is oh, this you're better back. you're back yes hello is yes. this better yes it's better okay yeah that's what you get <laughs> that's for what la- you get for laughing at the bloop <laughs> <laughs> like- <laughs> i was going to say that basically after 10 years they figured out what what um the sound was caused by it's not an earthquake it's not cthulhu it's not a bunch of whales it's not like some like gigantic animal underwater it's uh basically ice caving iceberg cavings underwater that it's like really really big ice that like did its thing like deep underwater and then it made that much sound and then that loud of a sound. That that and was then, loud? Um, Bloop? That was really loud. That was... Because, again, it's, like, like 500 kilometers underwater. Like, after 1997, there's no other, uh, you know, loud sounds have been recorded after that one. Yeah, that's, that's my story. And then the side story that I was going to say, speaking of ice and water... This one better be scary. Bloop. Okay, because I was watching it. It kind of is. Um, this is not my story. This is a story um, relayed by a YouTuber named um, Forge Labs. Uh, he was talking about um, what they were doing as kids. In uh, a, their YouTuber, school, a YouTuber? A YouTuber, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. He, okay. he does Minecraft YouTube. It's like really fun stuff. I usually watch his videos. It's really funny. He He talked about... Um, the Lake Boys, or that's what like people used to call him and like bunch of his friends back then. Because behind his school is similar to yours. Before like there's a forest, and then further in the forest, a little bit further is like there's a lake. Where and what they used what they used to do is when it's winter, they sort of pushed each other around the lake and see who f- like gets their foot like dipped in the frozen lake. So as they kept doing it for like two weeks or something um they heard the blue they would have to like go further they heard the blue <laughs> and that's the end <laughs> kidding <laughs> i hate you so much for laughing at the loop <laughs> so um they went further deeper into like the lake where it, it's part a rushing river some bits of it is frozen so um, they were like laughing and playing around and pushed each other. And then one of his friends got pushed in the water itself. <gasps> Not just like his foot, his leg or whatever. It, it Like his friend like fell in the water. And then he hold, his friend like grabbed on to I, like an area. He had to like like hold it 
and then like everyone was like laughing and stuff and then they had to pull his friend out looking back he said that um his friend could have died yeah that's when he like kind of realized that like that was like really stupid and dangerous of what they did as kids uh when i was listening to him talk about it he was playing this um 100 days in minecraft antarctic or something like in the arctic or something um where there's like like ice and so on and then um he was talking about it his friend's body could have gotten pneumonia his body could have been washed by the river uh-huh cuz it, it was rushing the water was rushing the river and then um his body could have went under the ice and then like kept going if he, his friend didn't he wasn't able to like grab on to something and then like if none of them like helped pulled him up that could have been disastrous so yeah That's my side part. Is that scary enough, Andrew? Yeah, definitely scarier than the bloop. Thank you so much, Nancy. Hey, the bloop story. is scary. Uh huh. Sure, it's scary. The bloop is scary. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, the bloop is scary. I guess. Mm. I hate you so much for laughing at the bloop. <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, people back then were like, what made this, like, terrible sound? Because it was, like, really deep underwater. It's not terrible sound. It's not a terrible... It's a bloop. It is. It's a terrible sound. Because it's underwater. And it's, like, really loud. I hate so much for that. Man. <laughs> uh, let's take a break. <laughs> and, like, tell us what your story is about for in a bit. Before we do that break, mm. you need a break to get it out of your system. <laughs> I hate you so much for laughing at the loop. <laughs> so thank you so much, Nitz, for sharing your bloop. Um, thank you. We're gonna be taking a break. Uh, this one's. A do you quick... want to talk about the Josh Big Josh fight instead? The what? Did you not hear about that? It's like a whole thing in the internet. The Greek Josh fight. Oh, the all the Joshes are fighting. Yeah, I heard about. Uh-huh. That. Yeah. Okay, we're okay. gonna be taking a break, and when we come back, <laughs> so much. I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be talking about uh, <laughs> not about a bloop, because the bloop is scary enough for you. <laughs> we're gonna be taking a break. Before we get back to the episode, you should check out this a Pipe Network show. Catch the Pisar Tales weekly as we tackle issues about education and share experiences about teaching. Hosted by Jay Australia, available on your favorite podcast platforms. And welcome back. In this hand of mine, you can't stop the things I do. I lie. I've searched high and low, wrote down an essay. Now Andrew is back, and there's hell to pay. There's a story for you. Uh-huh, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, so my story is... Is not as scary as the bloop? Is, is, stop. I finally got it out of my system. Stop. Okay. You kept laughing about it. I'm gonna make fun of you. Make you laugh more about it. Shut up. Okay. The year is 1938. And it is... The golden age for radio at exactly 9 p.m. at October 30. You just came from a show, a radio show, hosted by a ventriloquist. You know, the one that... Oh, I thought you mean um, hosted by Cecil Baldwin. No, no, no. It was hosted by a ventriloquist. Okay, so you're like, oh, uh, there's another channel on the radio that has a... Radio drama show that I would like to listen to. The Mercury Theater on air. And uh, you ch- so you tune into CBS. 
Mm-hmm. But, but then you hear this. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. From the Meridian Room in the Park Plaza Hotel in New York City, we bring you the music of Raymond Raquello and his orchestra. With the touch of the Spanish, Raymond Raquello leads off with La Capacita. <laughs> So you're expecting like a radio drama on the air, but then you hear that. What would you think? I, th- if it's like, I think it's a commercial or something. I think it's a commercial. I don't know. It's like, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to wait for the radio drama, I guess. <laughs> That's what I would think. Uh, but, like, but, I, I'm okay. going to wait for like the drama bit. You would think na, oh, okay. So, wala pala yung Mercury Theater on air tonight. It's not It's not the show that I was expecting. It's just like a normal music show. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I get it, I get it. Okay, so yeah, you, you're here expecting <laughs> na... It would be like a normal radio drama show, but no, mm-hmm. you hear music and then you're kind of like, oh, it's not a radio drama show, then what is this? And then all of a sudden you hear this. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt our program of dance music to bring you a special bulletin from the Intercontinental Radio News. At 20 minutes before 8 central time, Professor Farrell of the Mount Jennings Observatory, Chicago, Illinois, reports observing several explosions of incandescent gas occurring at regular intervals on the planet Mars. The spectroscope indicates the gas to be hydrogen and moving toward the Earth with enormous velocity. Professor Pearson of the observatory at Princeton confirms Farrell's observation and describes the phenomenon as, quote, like a jet of blue flame shot from a gun, unquote. We now return you to the music of Ramon Raquello playing for you in the Meridian Room of the Park Plaza Hotel situated in downtown New York. So, 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 so basically what he's saying is like, oh wait, sorry guys, like, let's pause this really fun music real quick and give you like an update. Apparently there's this scientist who's like basically saying that the, Mar- the, the Mars is like expelling gas or like whatever and then like it's basically... Um, blue balls of flames hurling towards us. Okay, now back to the music. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. What so you're you're kind of like, okay, holy shit, what the fuck is this? All of a sudden, uh, there's what what is coming towards us? So you're kind of like, okay, you're listening on, right? You're listening on, right? And then all of a sudden, this happens. I feel like it's so night veil. <laughs> okay, so it, it, it keeps going, it keeps going. From time to time, you would hear um, you would hear updates and all of that, and then uh, mm-hmm. uh, and then something crashes onto onto Earth, right? Earth. During this uh-huh. bulletin, uh-huh. and then they have uh-huh. an eyewitness who's in contact mm-hmm. with CBS to talk about what mm-hmm. what happened, and uh, uh-huh. so you're like intrigued, right? You're intrigued. That why why mm-hmm. the, what the fuck is this like? Not knowing anything, like, what, what the fuck is this? So, this is what happened next. We now return you to Carl Phillips at Grover's Mill. Ladies and gentlemen, am I on? Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, here I am, back of a stone wall that adjoins Mr. Wilmer's garden. From here, I get a sweep of the whole scene. I'll give you every detail as long as I can talk and as long as I can see. The more state police have arrived. They're drawing up a cordon in front of the pit. About 30 of them. No need to push the crowd back now. They're willing to keep their distance. The captain's conferring with someone. Can't quite see who. Oh, yes, I believe it's Professor Pearson. Yes, it is. Now, now they've parted and the professor moves around one side, studying the object while the captain and two policemen advance with something in their hands. I can see it now. It's a white handkerchief tied to a pole. Flag of truce. If those creatures know what that means, what anything means. Wait a minute. Something's happening. A humped shape is rising out of the pit. I can make out a small beam of light against a mirror. What's that? There's a jet of flame springing from that mirror and it leaps right at the advancing men. It strikes them head on. 
the logs are turning into flames. Ah! Now the whole field's caught up by the woods, the bars, the, the gas tanks, tanks for the automobiles are spreading everywhere. It's coming this way now, about 20 yards to my right. Hello? Ladies and gentlemen, due to circumstances beyond our control, we are unable to continue the broadcast from Grover's Mill. <laughs> Evidently, there's some difficulty with our field transmission. <laughs> However, we will return to that point at the earliest opportunity. So, not I knowing... thought we got this. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Um, I was shutting up for the audio. But anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you know, it's fine, it's fine. Being like, a person, it got cut off, so I'm like, I thought we got cut off. <laughs> so being a person from the 1930s, the 1940s, 1938, how would you feel if all of a sudden that happened on radio? So keep in mind, radio is still a Alien new Alien invasion. Yeah, so... <laughs> It's you, one of those books that you read back then. It talks about alien invasions. They come from the sky. And no, they're going to take our brains. No, but like, like not knowing about anything. <laughs> Sorry, like, but like there are books like that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, how would you feel if that happened on the radio? I mean, if like I was from back in 19, got it, whenever, um, I would be very scared. And then I'd like, like make sure I'm safe. And then like I get can still hear the news and then like be updated and then like probably bar my doors and you know lock myself in if you had gone earlier into the show or earlier into the broadcast you would have known that this was the radio adaptation of hg wells's novel war on the worlds by the mercury mm. theater on air so what they did mm. was they kind of made it sound really realistic that it sounded like it was just mm -mm. a normal radio broadcast. But the thing was, you can't rewind stuff on radio, right? Everything happens live. So, no. So yeah. if you missed the warning at the start, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have known that this was a radio drama. You would panic. You would panic, uh -huh. right? So, this is directed and narrated by Orson Welles, a famous actor, director, producer, and screenwriter. And basically, the radio drama is about a CBS radio broadcast when all of a sudden, a UFO arrives on Earth and Martians begin to attack. Now, the thing was, a lot of the people who tuned into the show did not catch the warning at the start of the show mm. and this caused a lot of people to panic so there were a lot of reports of phone calls to the police station asking one if there really was a Martian mm -hmm. invasion in Grover Mills or in Grove Mills or something like that <laughs> um, uh -huh. and the second one is how can they help they wanted to enlist on the army to 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 be part of the militia to uh, at to help, you know, d defend Earth from yeah. the attack and all that. If they listened further into the show, they would have known that this was just a radio drama because there were three other times mm -hmm. where they warned everyone that or repeated the warning that this was just a radio adaptation of the H.G. Wells novel, The War of the Worlds. So, mm -mm. basically, the, the warning said that uh, this is not real. This is just a radio drama. Yeah, that, an ad that, adaptation, that yeah. yeah. And all that. But at that point, it was actually too late because a lot of people actually panicked um, and they were, they were running around in town. Um, there was... Um, reports of people in this one town panicking there was reports by AT&T uh, telephone switchboard operators uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll send I'll post the video on discord so that everyone can watch it yes uh, but um, uh -huh. basically uh, the telephone switchboard operators were recounting that night where when the broadcast happened and then 
there was one call that they mm-hmm. received that this guy was planning to kill their whole family so that the Martians couldn't get them. Oh, damn. Yeah, so this caused so much panic. um, And a lot of people really fell for it because they didn't know it was was just a radio... It was a radio drama and all that. During this time, um, radio was actually on the rise as this new mass communication or mass media medium. And a lot of the newspapers were losing business. And they were like, okay, this, we have to tear this, um, we have to tear this down. This is getting out of hand. We are losing business. What can mm-hmm. we do? So when they found out about this radio broadcast and the effect that it had on some of the people across the country, they were like, okay, let's blow this up and discredit the radio for something that that can <gasps> be that can turn into uh, uh, something scary that can turn into a mass panic across the the country and Mm-mm. that's what they did the next morning newspapers all over the country reported how this radio broadcast on CBS caused a panic all over the country um, they they exaggerated everything and the story blew up. Mm. So basically, there were false accusations, inaccurate stories. Um, there were, it, it was basically fake news by newspapers. Oh, the, fir- the first case of, of, of fake news. Um, well, not really the first case, but you know, like. No, no, but like technically. Yeah. yeah. You know, fake news. But yun. All of this blew up, and Orson Welles was probably the only one of the few people who actually believed that he had caused the mass panic um, mm. because uh, during the radio broadcast, he felt like um, there were uh, CBS was getting calls about, about this radio broadcast and a lot of people really mm. fell for it, r- really fell for the radio broadcast. He actually felt so bad that at the end of the show, because someone told him off air that what, ha- what had happened, and he had to issue this statement at the end of the show. This is Orson Welles, ladies and gentlemen. Out of character to assure you that the war of the world has no further significance than as the holiday offering it was intended to be. The Mercury Theater's own radio version of dressing up in a sheet and jumping out of a bush and saying boo. Starting now, we couldn't soap all your windows and steal all your garden gates by tomorrow night, so we did the best next thing. We annihilated the world before your very ears and utterly destroyed the CBS. You will be relieved, I hope, to learn that we didn't mean it and that both institutions are still open for business. So goodbye, everybody, and remember, please, for the next day or so, the terrible lesson you learned tonight. That grinning, glowing, globular invader of your living room is an inhabitant of the pumpkin patch, and if your doorbell rings and nobody's there... That was no Martian. It's Halloween. So he felt so bad about it that he actually had to issue that statement at the end of the radio broadcast. And um, mm. yeah, the next morning, uh, he issued a statement. I can also link that on the Discord server. So um, he was just talking about his experience and how he was. He really felt bad that he he that this happened, but. Uh, because of that, his popularity skyrocketed because for like the next month, the newspapers could not stop talking about it. And it re- like the newspaper really did a lot of things to blow this story up. So this radio broadcast mm-hmm. cemented Orson Welles' legacy on radio and eventually he out- outdid himself with another project called mm. Citizen Kane. It is a movie where he acted and it is considered one of the greatest movies of American cinema. That's my story. Um, the story of how a radio broadcast brought panic all over America. It's like so cool. Well, like at the same time, like that's like really scary because like that's how like news nowadays, like smallest misinformation can cause like so much panic into the world. 
You can actually listen to the whole uh, radio broadcast. Uh, do you want me to link it as well? Uh, yeah, you can you can down, you can download if, like, the whole thing. Anyone wants to like, listen to it. Yeah, you can download the whole thing. It's like really good. The way that they told the story was really good. I have it saved on my phone. I listen to it from time to time. Uh, mm. I, the story, the way that they presented the story, it, it's like it's super nice. So yeah, that's it. That's my mm. fart. The newspapers were so eager to tear down radio, but actually this just cemented radio's impact on 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 like yeah. the masses and how good it could be. And eventually radio became like one of the greatest, you know, um greatest mass media mediums of all time. Uh second to you know, like the internet and all that. So that that's it. That's mm-hmm. my fart. No more. You don't have any other comments uh, as, from about the about the. Oh, wait, the I don't. I can't. Are you? Are, no, you, are it's you like really good though. At the same time, it's like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you want me to say bloop? No, don't say bloop. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Andrew. <laughs> uh, that's it for my fart. Thanks, eh. We're going to be taking a break. And when we come back, we have a story um, from a fart gang. And she is going to be recounting one of her horror experiences or supernatural experiences. We'll be right back. This is Nin. If you're loving this podcast so far, then you should tell people about us. Your support really means so much to me. And A, it's real simple. Tell everyone. Tell your family, your friends. Don't be shy. Join us. And we are back. Back, back, backity back. Back, back, backity back. And uh, yeah, this is the second episode where we don't have a guest. So we actually have a story that will make us go, how? It's time for you to bring it in. Andrew and me are waiting. So come on down. We'll read it now. Your stories that make us go. How? How? Okay, so today's story that will make us go, how, is actually... By someone, a fart gang, her name is V, or as I like to call her, Vivian, even though she doesn't like that name. It's just a background thing. She kind of sent this fart a little after our episode with her, but by then I had already set up everything, like the the next few episodes, so I couldn't play this thing that she sent until today. So this is what happened with V right after we had our recording. Okay, so a day after recording one episode of Farts with Andrew and Nina, this weird thing happened. Hold on, can I just pause? She's Nina. she calls she calls you Nina. It's it's Ninja. It's Ninja V. It's Ninja Vivian. Ouch. I and then, I was like, here I am, like, we're friends. And I'm like, okay, okay. Char lang, char lang, know, v, char like, lang v. Joke, joke lad. Joke, joke lang. Well, like, because, like, I'm, I'm kind of used, like, people would, like, we think, like, oh, no, like, uh Well, like, no, guys, like, honestly, though, I, I'm kind of used to people calling me Nin, Nina, Ninya, Nina, like, stuff like that. I was like, that's like okay, whichever but, works for you guys. But but okay. you full. Uh, no one has called you floor. Um, please don't. <laughs> like you yeah, no. thing that like I'm not gonna tolerate. I tolerate everything else, just not that. <laughs> I think someone did like before. So no, I think someone floor. did before. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I think see, I know. Um, my friend Casey. I think Casey was the one who did, did it. And oh, like I keep friends. calling her perv Except for something for dumb. A bit. Yeah, like previous episode, 
We had lads by lads is my friend. Okay. Um <laughs> Oh wait, no, that was not a fr- uh, th- like yeah, friend. <laughs> uh so yeah, yeah. so uh like, I- i'm pretty continue sure continue playing the uh, no. uh, uh, yeah before we get Audio. to that everyone knows on the show that your full name is nina floor so that's why i was like nobody calls you floor maybe some people forgot i don't know if no it's literally on the first season everyone... of farts i don't that's... i don't think people look everyone knows yeah i don't Did think we? everyone knows but eh. uh but it's <laughs> literally it literally said on the cover art of farts the the previous one remember uh, it, it it had a podcast by Andrew Tapino wait lang let me pull it up sa ano ko oh my god it had your full oh yeah it says right here okay okay <laughs> I had to like check okay okay <laughs> okay, okay go on no? v v continue continue <laughs> side checks <laughs> sorry v I I couldn't put these into words properly and I don't even know where to start the story. Oh, hold on. Before before she gets into the story, can I just say that she is uh the way that she pronounces her her sentences, it's so good. Her radio training has pulled off. Okay, continue. So that night I was dozing off to sleep. While the song "Put Your Head on My Shoulder" was playing, and I was hugging my brown, medium-sized teddy bear. Okay, so um, uh, you know the song that that goes, "Put Your Head on My Shoulder" yeah. by Paul Anika. I forgot who is it by. I don't the, know. Uh, Sorry, basta, I don't basta, know. Was the Doja Cat like modernized it? She made her remix of it. But anyway, here. And I felt its arms wrapping around my neck like it's gonna put its head on my shoulder like a non-existent lover. Well, a part of me wishes that it was true, but a part of me believes that (laughs) it's not. I don't know, it's leaving me with confusion. We love you so much, V. V. We love you so much, V. You didn't have to reveal that... that uh, okay, guys, guys, if <laughs> V is a very attractive girl, so if you are looking for, you know, she's single, you know, she's looking for someone to love and to cherish and to hold. Um, if you're interested, please message us. Uh, we might have our first fart wedding coming soon. Ooh. <laughs> Should we put up a, like, photo of V? On like Discord or something. Nah. nah. Reto. <laughs> guys, guys, this is our friend V. <laughs> yeah, also Kuri um, is looking for a BB boy. Um Yeah, like um like our friend Kuri, she's looking for someone. Like ga- <laughs> beb, beb, it out there. Nins. They they know who Kuri mm-hmm. is. They they listen to the first season, I'm pretty sure. Mm. Okay, continue. Oh, that was it. Okay. So um <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, so basically, V experienced... Uh, she was listening to Put Your Head on My Shoulder and then she, all of a sudden, she feels her teddy bear uh, wrap its arms around her and then, like, Mm-mm. put... It basically moved. Long yeah, it, story it, short, it yeah, moved. It, ba- it basically moved. It was going for uh, Put Your Head on My Shoulder as well. And uh, I guess that freaked her out. Um, I want to say this is more cute than scary. So this is more like a this is more like a wh- how would I say it like a like a toot, not a fart, you know, like a toot. Um, I like a bloop. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I hate you so far that, but like I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> Uh, that's what we're gonna call it from now on. Like s- stories <laughs> like this, we're gonna call it the bloop. <laughs> bloop. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, that was more like a bloop for me. It wasn't. It wasn't scary, you know. It, it, it's you know. You can't see what I'm shaking my head though. <laughs> like every single time we're gonna refer it as the bloop or like bloops. <laughs> I'm like. <sighs> v, when are you Shakes coming back on the show? We want, we we miss you so much. We wanna we wanna talk with you soon. So please come this back. This is why we show. need another person. Another show. Yeah. 
Mm. You know, if you've oh, got a scare... Uh, should we, like, say who's our, our next guest, though? That's a secret. E- do we have a next guest? E- Ooh, do you want to be the next guest? Do you want to have your stuff on the show? E- you know, uh, <laughs> if you've got a fart yourself and you want to share it with us, we are open. You know, we want you on the show. So please send in your email at fartspod at gmail.com. Um, you can send it in the form of and like a like a narrative, you can write it down, or you can tweet send it, a re- tweet send, at us. Yeah, tweet at us. You can send a recording, and Discord. we'll play it on the show. I promise Email. you, we will play it on the show. Um, also, uh, we need to have our weekly dose of worship from the Fort Scott. Um, I don't think I mentioned this last week, but that that was actually Ade, who who voiced that. So, <laughs> okay, thank you Ade, for voicing that. So thank you Ade for for giving me for giving me that. Um, I kind of told him, uh, please say this, please say this like your um like your uh like a priest or something, and then he gave me that. Oh, hey, <laughs> we love it. Okay, so uh, the next thing it will be bloop. Okay, so thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show, uh, Vivian. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who continues to support the show. Please, please tell your friends all about it. You know, um, we really are thankful that you listen to the show. But wouldn't it be better if you had friends, a community listening in with you? You know, we want, we want you, we want, we want them to come, come, come into the fart cult. Enjoy the fart god. Join us. Join us. <clears throat> My throat. Okay. I guess it's time for us to end the show. Here we go. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Frightening, Alarming, Real Life Tales show. You can follow Nina on all her socials at Nin C. Fernandez. That's N-I-N-C-F-E-R-N-A-N-D-E-Z. I'm at The Andrew Tops on everything and the show's Facebook and Twitter is at Farts Pod. If you've got a scary story you'd like to share, then you can email fartspod at gmail.com or message us on our socials. We also have a Discord server, so if you want to come and hang out with us, we frequently talk about anything in there and we also post memes and such. The link will be in the show notes of this episode. Till next week. Goodbye. Bye. I'll start streaming next month. Okay. Uh, e. Uh, e. <laughs> so I think my internet show. Uh, I kind of really want to stream. Uh, uh, I'm going to be playing Alien Isolation. <gasps> okay. Have fun.